So have you ever looked for the right thing in the wrong place? That's kind of what was going on with the Magi in our gospel lesson for Epiphany. They were looking for the right thing in the wrong place. And it wasn't because they weren't intelligent. No, the Magi are also known as wise men. And although they weren't actually all men, they were certainly well-educated scholars. And their actions exhibit the kind of true wisdom that manifests as curiosity. The Magi were Persian Zoroastrian priests who practiced a sophisticated religion that heavily influenced Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism, among other faiths. And it sometimes disappoints me when modern-day preachers dismiss those priests as simple stargazers, as though they lacked grounding in scripture or lacked theological framework. And I grew up in the church, and many of you did too. And I have heard over and over the jokes cracked about those wise men not having a map or a GPS or a smartphone, and no wonder it took them so long but I'm not going to make any jokes about the Magi today because they had a sophisticated navigation and discernment system that I certainly don't have the wisdom to follow. I fully acknowledge that I would have been so far behind them. And at least they were curious, they were seeking, they were looking for the right thing. And even though we sing we three kings, we know there weren't three, and we know they weren't kings. But it disappoints me when I hear about how silly we are for calling them kings when we all, we all know better, don't we? Because it dismisses a legitimate tradition of most of Latin America, the Philippines, and beyond. Referring to the Magi as kings draws attention to the kingship, the lordship of Christ, which is the whole point of Epiphany. Maybe we too can be curious enough to learn from the traditions of others. So, now that I've gotten that off my chest, a group of magi discern that a new king of the Jews was recently born. <clears throat> One of the main tenets of their religious practice was to practice good deeds. And so, a delegation of magi went on a long journey to welcome the rising king. They were looking for the right thing in the way that they knew best. They followed the stars. We don't know exactly how they ended up in Jerusalem instead of Bethlehem, but I don't blame them. Bethlehem was not the obvious choice for the birthplace of a king. Jerusalem, the capital city where the grown-up king of the Jews, Herod the Great, lived. So, since Herod was about 70 years old at the time and had 10 wives and many children, it made sense that he might know who his successor would be. I think we need to talk about Herod the Great. Herod's reputation was not so great. He was known, he is known, for being a toxic, paranoid narcissist. He was worried about others gaining power over him. Suspecting them of treason, he had many family members, including some of his own children, executed. To establish his credibility and legacy, Herod built a palace and fortresses. He built a second temple and other large projects, which caused widespread impoverishment of his people. And although he wasn't ethnically Jewish, Herod was considered the king of the Jews. He rose to power on the coattails of his father, who had a very close relationship with Julius Caesar. Galilee and Judea, the first century Palestinian territories where Jesus' story is set, were both under Roman occupation. So it was the Roman government who appointed Herod the Great as king of the Jews. And so, maybe you can see how the Jews themselves might have viewed Herod the Great. Many were doubtful about the validity of that designation. 
And maybe you can see how tragically the Magi find themselves looking for the right thing in, like, really the wrong place. Maybe the wrongest place. They come in and ask, where is the child who is born king of the Jews? And King Herod is frightened. And all of Jerusalem is frightened, too, because if Herod loses it, but he doesn't yet. Instead, Herod gets manipulative. Oh, I see. You're looking for the child who will be born the true king of the Jews. I myself haven't yet found time in my busy schedule to make my way down yet. But if the scripture is right, you should be able to find him in Bethlehem. But definitely, when you find him, Please, 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 please make sure that you come back here and we'll have dinner and you can tell me all about it so that I, too, can go and pay him homage. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Looking for the right thing in the wrong place. Do you think that that's what he wants to do? I mean, if you don't have the whole backstory and you just see the charm and the gravitas in the moment, and you haven't yet read past verse 12 in the Gospel of Matthew, you might be looking for the right thing in the wrong place too. But if you read on, you find that Herod wants to kill the child and tries to by executing all of the baby boys in Bethlehem. Even though they're looking for the right thing, by looking in the wrong place, by making a human error, These extremely wise magi are unintentionally complicit in great harm. That's the reality of this story that is hardest for me to take. That truly good, truly intelligent, truly well-meaning people can be complicit in harm. Most of us are out there every day, trying our best to do the right thing, trying to be good, trying to do good, trying to treat others with kindness and even grace. And on our very worst days, at least we're trying to not harm other people. Am I right? And yet, the world is full of pain and suffering. Where does it all come from? This would be easier to take if Herod was just totally insane and the Magi were totally innocent. It would have been easier to take if Herod was just going to do it anyway, but how would he have been tipped off if no one else seemed to acknowledge Jesus' lordship until Herod the Great was long gone? The Magi are good people who just look for the right thing in the wrong place. They make a huge mistake, and it causes harm that cannot be undone. Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever gone looking for the right thing, but in the wrong place? And has it ever caused harm? The right things that we look for, they're all good things. We're looking for love, for connection, for comfort, for meaning, for security, for hope, for belonging. But we look in the wrong places. We look for belonging in social cliques or clubs or in the world of social media, and we get sucked in into a spiral of ever-deepening isolation and feeling even worse about ourselves. We look for hope in the promises of the marketplace, buying into consumerism and capitalism, but one acquisition is never enough, and hope becomes a carrot on a string projected outside of ourselves. We look for security in a self-centered way that just breeds anxiety and stress. We look for meaning 
in our accomplishments and our accolades and a never-ending hustle that stretches our spirits so thin that we wonder who we really even are. We look for connection by creating or sustaining drama, communicating our need for connection through poking our loved ones until they react or respond intensely. We look for comfort by hiding inside of our shell, by numbing our fears, our pains and stresses through food, through television, through sex, drugs, and alcohol. And we look for love, and our hearts get trampled. We are looking for the right things. But when we look in the wrong places, we unintentionally cause harm. And all too often, the harm that we cause doesn't appear to manifest outside of ourselves because it's wreaking havoc within us. We feel isolated, insecure, anxious, afraid. We put too much pressure on ourselves to meet the needs of others while resenting others for not meeting our needs. Instead of feeling like we've found what we're looking for, we feel more lost. It may appear that this inner turmoil exists only within our own soul, but it doesn't work like that. The pain in me pains the people I love. When we look for the right things in the wrong place, we cause harm not only to ourselves, but to our friends, to our spouses, to our children. We cause harm that has a ripple effect that our kindness can't undo. So what now? Well, the scripture says that when the Magi finally looked in the right place, when they finally got to the place where the star had stopped, and they were looking for the right thing in the right place, that's when they had their epiphany. The Greek text says that they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. They finally found what they were looking for. See, when we look for hope and security, for belonging, for meaning and comfort and connection and love, we look all over the place. But we can find it all in one place, in grace through Christ. We belong to each other through Christ. We have hope in the kingdom of heaven through Christ. We are secure in grace through Christ. We find our life's meaning and our truest identity in serving and following Christ. We can lean on Christ's abiding presence for our deepest needs in comfort and compassion, for courage, for connection. And there is no greater love for us than Christ, who laid down his life for our sake. We are looking for the right things. We just need to look in the right place. You know, there's a reason for the juxtaposition of King Herod and King Jesus. They rule in very different ways, don't they? King Herod rules with wealth and prestige, with control and fear and violence. On the surface, he might look powerful and successful and admirable, like someone we're compelled to follow. But King Jesus rules with material poverty, with humility. He rules with freedom, with grace, and with peace. On the surface, Jesus might look powerless and unsuccessful. His appearance and dress is certainly less sharp and snappy than that of King Herod. On the surface, King Jesus might not be the obvious choice. It's almost inevitable that we'll be tempted to look for the right thing in what looks attractive and powerful and charming in this world. But we find what we're looking for in Christ, who is already here, already dwelling within us, and already 
offering us more than enough love to save us from ourselves. Mary and Joseph take Jesus and run for their lives to a new country. The Magi cover their tracks and they travel a completely different path, perhaps an unfamiliar route that was more challenging to navigate. We can't undo the past harm that has been done, but we can change our direction. When we experience the forgiveness, the hope, the belonging, the security and peace that the love of, and grace of Jesus brings us, then we too can experience an epiphany. We too are compelled to change directions. All too often, though, we hesitate to change directions. We wonder, what will people think? Will they realize that we've made a mistake? We struggle to accept God's grace. We don't want to be forgiven. We want to be right. We want to earn it. We want to deserve it. We want to prove ourselves. We want to save ourselves. And all of a sudden, we're already back to looking for the right thing in the wrong place. All too often, we hesitate to change directions because we've just spent so much time and so much effort getting to where we are right now. We've invested so much of ourselves in getting to this place that changing directions is really scary. But we don't have to spend any more time in the wrong place just because we spent a lot of time getting there. Through Christ, we are forgiven, and we are free to change directions, to change the course of our lives, to heal from the harm. And the healing that we do also has a ripple effect. It ripples to our neighbors, to our spouses, to our children, and healing is hard work, but it is the only way the future world can look better than the world does today. The Magi encounter Christ and go home by a different way. So can we. Today is the first day in a new year, and while we might long for a clean slate, there really is no such thing. But if we have been looking for the right thing in the wrong place, if we have been heading into harm's way, today is a, as good a day as any to set our intentions straight. Friends, we can change directions. We cannot undo the past, but by the grace of God, we can make our future so much better. Amen? Amen. Amen.